valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. And just a quick word for myself, uh, the super thanks button is on and is near the like button on the taskbar. And just a reminder that if you donate 20 or more toward the channel's efforts, you get a video of your own choice. And that video takes priority over any project that I am doing. And with that, let's get on with the story today, which is the Pennsylvania Railroad's duplex Q1 experimental locomotive. Enjoy. So I thought I would start the story this way in why did railroads want to use or develop these duplex type locomotives, which is entirely experimental in the United States especially. And duplexing in itself has some advantages that solve some maintenance issues, especially with the track. Because the main disadvantage of two-cylinder locomotives is the heavy hammer blow on the rails caused by the attempt to balance the reciprocating parts with additional masses mounted on the wheels. And it was found that this issue can be reduced by using multiple cylinders acting on more driving wheels. So here in the United States, the B&L Railroad with its Emerson locomotive and the Pennsylvania Railroad with the Q1 uh, wanted to try a concept called duplexing. And a duplex locomotive is a steam locomotive that divides the driving force on its wheels by using two pairs of cylinders rigidly mounted to a single locomotive frame. And to be sure, it is not an articulated locomotive. The concept was first used in France in 1863, but was particularly developed in the early 1930s by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. And the Pennsylvania Railroad desired to apply the duplex principle to freight haulage, and a Q1 was the first experimental in that direction. It was a 4644 wheel arrangement that was on fast uh, freight locomotive, and it was delivered in May of 1942. And like the B&O's Emerson before it, it had a second pair of cylinders facing backwards, and all were fitted with standard Walsh's valve gears. One of the issues with this locomotive noticed straight away was the fact that the driving wheels were 77 inches, which is more suited for passenger service than freight hauling. Before I continue on with the Q1, I got a little ahead of myself, and I want to talk about the Pennsylvania Railroad briefly in itself. I am a huge fan of the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, design team, its locomotives, history, etc. What I wasn't a fan of was their corporate level freewheeling spending. And that was mainly associated with their brazen, out-of-control ego of having to compete head-to-head -head with everything the rail other railroad companies had going on around them. It just led to a series of poor business decisions. So having said that, the one thing I really liked about the Pennsylvania Railroad was the fact that it wasn't afraid to experiment with new steam locomotive types. And for its part, the Pennsylvania Railroad did everything in its power to extend the lifetime of steam locomotion versus diesel power. And no one would ever be able to take that away from them. Which leads us back to the Q1. In 1940, the Pennsylvania Railroad's board approved $595,000 for the construction of an experimental class dual service locomotive. Now folks, $595,000 in that day translate to almost $11 million today. So that directly refers to what I just said about the Pennsylvania Railroad not being afraid to throw money at experimental types. So anyhow, the locomotive was built in 1942, and it became the Q1 class, and the number was 6130. So the Q1, of course, was a duplex locomotive. It had a wheel arrangement of 4644, consisting of a four-wheel leading truck, two sets of driving wheels, six followed by four, in a rigid locomotive frame, and a four-wheel trailing truck. The first group of six driving wheels was driven by a pair of cylinders mounted conventionally in front of them, while the real rear four driving wheels were driven by cylinders mounted behind them on either side of the firebox. The actual design was meant for dual service, like their previous M1s, and was also given that larger driving wheel size of 77 inches, which is really inadequate for freight pulling. So in essence, the Q1 was the last dual service locomotive designed by the Pennsylvania Railroad, and there's not even any substantial evidence showing that it was ever on passenger service to begin with. During its short service life, the Q1 spent far more time in the shops than running, as attested to the locomotive only running 165,000 service miles in its entire career from 1942 to 1949. Its first revenue service run occurred on May 31, 1942 from East Altoona to Enola with 125 cars and 10,000 tons. 
40 miles an hour was made on level track at 40% cutoff. In October 1943, it was assigned to the St. Clair Avenue Engine House in Columbus, Ohio, and ran mostly in the Ohio area to Chicago. The Q1 remained in service until July of 1949, after of which it was placed in storage. It was dismantled around 1945 and was removed from the company's books in January of 1952. The Pennsylvania Railroad considered the Q1 design unfit for series productions, and railroad historians alike considered it mostly a failure. Now we've already discussed the driving wheels being too tall at 77 inches for freight service, but also the backwards driving rear cylinders were a poor choice. Mounted next to the firebox, each constrained the other's size and the area of the firebox was dusty and hot, which increased cylinder wear. These problems had previously been encountered by the, the B&O's duplex attempts in the Emerson locomotive. The length of the steam pipes required also meant that a fair degree of power loss. And for its roughly $11 million investment, the one thing the Q1 did provide the Pennsylvania Railroad was a proper research and development for the next class of duplex. And that became the Q2 design. So with that, the following specifications apply to the Pennsylvania Railroad's 4644 duplex Q1 locomotive. The leading truck wheel diameter was 36 inches. The main drivers were 77 inches. The trailing di uh, truck diameter in the first wheel was 45 inches and the second wheel was 50 inches. The overall length of the locomotive was 122 feet 9 and 3 quarters inches. The adhesive weight over the drivers was 354,700 pounds. And that was divided uh, through five drivers, and the first one was 73,700 pounds, the second was 72,100 pounds, the third driver was 70,200 pounds, the fourth driver was 68,800 pounds, and the fifth driver was 69,900 pounds. And again, that's divided adhesive weight on these drivers. The fuel type was soft coal. The fuel capacity was 82,640 pounds. The water capacity was 19,167 U.S. gallons. The boiler pressure was 300 PSI. The heating surface overall was 7,808 square feet. The firebox was 580 square feet. The locomotive had four cylinders. The front cylinder was 23 inches by 28 inches. The rear cylinder was 19 and a half inches by 26 inches, and it used Walshirt's valve gears. The maximum speed was at least 70 miles an hour. The power output was 6,000 horsepower. The tractive effort was 81,793 pounds. The locomotive also carried a booster which provided an additional 11,250 pounds of tractive effort for a total of 93,043 pounds. The factor of adhesion was 4.34. There was just one locomotive built of this type and it was numbered to 6130 and it was withdrawn from service once again in 1949 and scrapped in 1952. And with that, I shall wrap up the video, and I will thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe as both features, the like and the subscribe, help my channel grow immensely. And visit our print shop at NickelPlateLimited on Etsy.com if you want to support the channel in that way. And we thank you once again.